Hello there, my fellow grimdark astronomers, and welcome back to another lore video on Warhammer 40k and its planets. Since relatively recently I did my best to revive this series with a video on Luna, I thought it was time to both make another video in the series and expand on the previous episode. And what better way to expand on Luna than talk about the entire solar system? Please note that we're not gonna talk about Mars or Terra in this video, as I already talked about Mars before and Terra will get its own video, or two. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Sol system in 40k, shall we? We will start outwards from the Sun, with Mercury. Mercury is a small dead world, but also a mining world orbiting very close to Sol. Despite its unforgiving conditions, shoal facilities operate in Mercury's orbit. During the Horus Heresy, Alpha Legion infiltrators work with anti-imperial scavenger clans from the area. Venus Venus is an inner planet of the Sol system, and the second closest to Sol. During the early stages of the Great Crusade, Venus was conquered by the Iron Warriors Space Marines during their so-called Mer Yasht campaign. The planet was dominated by war witches who fielded armies of litho golems. After the formation of the Imperium, Venus would play host to a wide variety of luxury resort orbitals, all intended to help the one percenters of the Sol system find respite and relaxation. Ceres This is a small dwarf planet, or planetoid, located within the Sol system's inner asteroid belt. During the Horus Heresy era, Ceres was home to Vox Relay and communication stations that help with communications between the inner and outer reaches of the system. It was also home to various orbital habitat stations, which were engaged in the industrial mining of the asteroid belt. Jupiter Jupiter is a gas giant orbited by a complex web of dozens of smaller satellite moons. It is almost a solar system in miniature, with the gas giant at its core rather than the blazing orb of a sun. The cloud of satellites and Trojan asteroids surrounding it are full of human colonies, Manufactoria and Mechanicus forges, powered by drinking in the radiation surging from the mammoth planet. They are also feeding on the mineral riches that in centuries of exploitation have yet to be fully exhausted. Jupiter is the shipyard of Terra, and its sky was forever filled with vessels. Centered on Ganymede and a dozen other smaller moons, space docks and fabricators worked ceaselessly to construct anything from single crew Raven interceptors to the gargantuan hulls of mighty battleships. The early history of Jupiter remains largely lost to Imperial savants. During the Age of Strife, Jupiter's moons were occupied by cruel Xenos overlords of an unknown race. Following the Treaty of Mars, when the Red Planet was incorporated into the burgeoning Imperium, the Great Crusade finally began in earnest. The rest of the solar system was the first region of space to be conquered by the Emperor and his newly rearmed and re-equipped Legiones Astartes. In the late 41st millennium, the Jovian shipyards still play a vital role in the construction of fleets of the Imperial Navy in combination with the Ring of Iron of Mars itself. The space docks and orbital workshops that circle Jupiter, like an artificial ring of more moons, are home to the millions of Technomat and drone servitors. They, in turn, work under the supervision of Mechanicus artisans and tech priests to build the ships of the Imperial Navy. Each vessel is a vast undertaking, some taking even decades or centuries. Many of those working on the construction of a warship will live and die in the process. Each of the Imperium's warship designs is constructed by only a single Jovian orbital shipyard. For example, the Emperor-class battleship, as well as the Tyrant and Dominator-class cruisers, are typical of the Imperial warships produced at the Jovian shipyards, and are each produced by a completely different orbital manufactoria. The Jovian shipyards are also responsible for the manufacture and production of the plasma drives that provide power to all the starship systems. To further enhance their vessels, 
the Jovian shipyards also possess the capability to manufacture their own pattern of Nova cannon, which replaces the standard explosive shells with Vortex warheads. From the moons of Jupiter, which are, or were, more or less populated to some degree, we have Ananke, Callisto, Europa, Io, and Yocasta. A few other interesting places around Jupiter include Thule. At the time of the opening years of the Horus Heresy, the asteroid moon of Thule had orbited the shipyards of Jupiter for six millennia. Suspended high above the gaseous surface of its patron planet, it dwelled innocuously beyond the greater Galilean moons. It was an ugly chunk of rock, its gravity so weak that its form was misshapen and mutated. The Mechanicum had hollowed it out using massive boring machines and filled its interior with energy and life support systems, as well as vast tunnels and chambers. The dead core of Thule had become a giant manufactorum of forge temples and compressors, a massive gravity engine at its beating heart. This construction extended from the surface via metal tendrils that supported blister domes, clinging like limpets to the rock, and pneumatic lifter arrays. But Thule was no mere misshapen asteroid. It was an orbital shipyard of Jupiter, and the place where the word bearers, Apocalypse class battleship, the Furious Abyss, was clandestinely built. Following its completion and subsequent launch, those same elements destroyed Thule, so there would be no witnesses that would verify the vessel's existence. Kadal Kadal was a satellite munition fortress, and one of the main reserves of fleet ordnance in the Sol system. A lump of ultra-hard nickel-iron ore, it had taken the Mechanicum two decades to excavate, and another decade to graft the fortress structures within. Nova shells, torpedo warheads, macro shells, propellant and explosive precursors, all of it lay in vibration and temperature controlled dark at the core of the rock. When a warship wanted rearming, it would approach and hold anchor away from Kadal. Barges would then shuttle the munitions out and return. Nothing and no one approached closer than several thousand kilometers. Anything that tried was greeted by Kadal's formidable defenses. When dealing with enough destructive material to crack open a moon, there were no acceptable risks. During the later years of the Horus Heresy, at the opening phase of the Solar War, the Alpha Legion instigated an anti-imperial revolt and Kadal was subsequently destroyed. Saturn Saturn is a massive, ringed gas giant and the sixth planet of the Sol system. Unlike the rest of the worlds in the Sol system, Saturn never hosted a large human population, due in part to Zeno's activity. Thus, it was the perfect candidate to house the newly created Inquisition when it was first established at the end of the Horus Heresy. The moons of Saturn serve as the location for a massive complex of military bases and orbital shipyards maintained by the Inquisition. Obviously, all of these areas are off-limits to anyone who doesn't serve or have clearance from the Holy Ordos. Mimas Mimas is the closest major moon to Saturn, marred by an immense impact scar that covers a quarter of the surface. This crater houses the inquisitorial prison complex containing the worst criminals of the Imperium. They are kept in isolated cells with psychic wards woven into the walls and guarded by gun servitors and inquisitorial stormtroopers. Enceladus This moon houses a citadel of the Inquisition, and is a vast palace from which Lord Inquisitors of the Ordo Malleus hold court. It is also the world where many of these lords maintain their own estates. The primary citadel used by the Inquisition is known as the Enceladus Fortress. In the libraries of this place, there are countless volumes of forbidden lore on the demonic and chaotic. The Enceladus Fortress also incorporates the Admiralty Spire, where the Empire of Saturn's ancient rulers signed their treaty with the Emperor in the Great Crusade. Tethys Tethys is the site of the hidden archive of the Librarium Demonicum, access to which is restricted to Lord Inquisitors. It is also the home to a number of demons trapped beneath the surface. 
One of the set trials for all aspiring paladins of the Grey Knights is to survive on its surface without their power armor. Yapitas Yapitas is the furthermost major moon in the orbit of Saturn, and home to a vast naval fortress and a series of dockyards. These serve the various strike elements of the Grey Knight fleet, along with the starships requisitioned by the Inquisition from Battlefleet Solar. Yapita serves as the only reliable way of getting into and out of the rings of Saturn. It was a stronghold of the Ringers, the culture that occupied parts of Saturn before the coming of the Emperor. Uranus This is a massive gas giant and the seventh world of the Sol system. Though never hospitable, it was home to orbiting human colonies, most notably the Azurites, a peaceful community of scavengers. The Azurite population was largely wiped out in the Great Crusade, during the so-called Unheard War, when their population became infected by a warp-spawned plague known as the Screaming which began to turn them into demons. Though the Imperial Fists were deployed to provide aid, they ended up destroying the population to prevent the spread of the plague. The moons of Uranus are now used mostly for mining by the Imperium. By the time of the Horus Heresy, Uranus's moons and close orbitals had been repopulated by human colonists. Neptune Neptune is another gas giant and the eighth and furthest major planet from Sol. It was first colonized by humanity during the era known as the Age of Terra. By the time the Emperor had reconquered Neptune for the Imperium during the Great Crusade, its inhabitants had been transformed into vile mutants by the isolation from Terra and the harsh environment. Pluto Pluto is a small dwarf planet located in the outer rim of the Sol system. During the Great Crusade era, it was home to major relay stations and defense stations that were responsible for warning Terra of any imminent invasion. During the Horus Heresy, this world and its accompanying moons was the site of a major Alpha Legion attack in what became the first major engagement in the Solar War. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Sol system in the Warhammer 40k setting. I am honestly sorry there isn't more lore on some of these planets, as I would have gladly made a special video for each one. Alas, this is more or less what we have. Maybe I should make videos on these planets from a present-day astronomical point of view. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel alive, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.